This Let's Edit with MIDI Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. Check out VideoGuys.com for great deals on Avid MIDI Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here, and I am back again with another MIDI Composer 101 tutorial, and in this lesson, we're going to take a look at creating a very cool, very stylized effect that I know editors use all the time. And of course, I'm talking about the text bed. Now, what do I mean by text bed? Well, the text bed is sort of that, you know, graphic treatment that you see that happens when you need to put a list on the screen, kind of like the one that you see in front of you. And in most cases, people do something like this in a program like Adobe's After Effects. But believe it or not, it's something that's very simple to do inside of your Media Composer timeline. And as you can see, I've actually laid it out for you right here the four things that we're going to be doing to create this cool text bed that you have in front of you right now. Of course, we're going to need to use the time warp effect to take our footage, slow it down over a certain period of time, you know, for the text to be on top of. Second, we're going to apply a BCC colorize effect. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, Kev, why would you use the BCC colorize effect? I don't have Boris Continuum Complete. Ah, but with your Media Composer subscription, you actually have access to BCC Light, which includes the BCC colorize effect. So whether you've downloaded it or not, you do actually have it. So if you did subscribe to Media Composer, make sure you have those four effects included in BCC Lite. Third, we're going to drop a blur effect on top to just sort of, you know, stylize it up a little bit more. And last but certainly not least, I'm going to add a quote unquote cool title. You can see my title treatment here, very cool, very not really stylized, but you know where, you know where I'm going with this. Uh, we're going to add some cool titles on top to sort of round this effect out. And you can see really in front of you the type of look that we're going with. You can use this to, you know, like I said, create lists. Maybe you're going to have a bumper going to commercial break, or even maybe you're doing a, you know, this TV show is brought to you by so-and-so, and you're going to put a little box in here with video and maybe with text underneath. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously an Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there. And let's just pick a shot here. It doesn't even really matter. We don't need to use the same shot that we used in the intro. Sure, why don't we just use this one? And what we're gonna do is we'll take, um, actually I wanna find one that's got a little bit more variation. Let's just see, do we have one of those here? Maybe we'll go with this one here. I think this one's pretty good. So we'll start the shot about there and we'll take it to about there, I think. Okay, now what's gonna happen when we drop this in, and this is important to keep in mind because we're gonna be slowing the shot down, essentially bringing it to a stop in the middle of the shot. The shot is not gonna end here. It's gonna end a lot sooner and you're gonna see what I mean by that in just a second. Now, obviously, you know, once we actually take the footage, slow it down, have it come to a stop, then have it play again, we can obviously extend the shot down however long we need to. But let's get in and let's do what I had as number one on the list first. Of course, we're gonna go with the time warp effect. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 on Windows. You'll see I'm actually already down in the time warp section and the version of time warp that we're gonna use is simply the time warp effect. What we're gonna do, drag and drop it onto our shot. Now, once we drag and drop it on there, Nothing happens, why? Well, because the time warp is at 100%, which is exactly what we wanna have it at. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start slowing the footage down about there, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're going to come up to our tools and I wanna to come down to the motion effect editor. Now, you'll see the motion effect editor, we have a few options. What we have up here at the top, you'll see that I just closed it. We have our speed graph and we have our position graph. Now, for what we're gonna be doing, I'm going to use the speed graph. Now, like I said, this is the point where we want the effect to start to do its transition to the uh, to the freeze frame. So what we're gonna do, simply add a keyframe right here. Now, I think I'm gonna have this move take about, you know, two seconds to have it sort of accomplish itself. So what I'm gonna do is just hit simply, let's come over here, I'm just gonna simply hit plus 48. That's gonna move us down two seconds because we are dealing with 23 down eight frames per second or you know 24 frames per second. So punching in plus 48 is gonna move us down two seconds. And all I'm gonna do at this point is simply add another keyframe in the motion effect editor. Now all I have to do to slow this shot down is simply just drag the keyframe right down to zero, which it's gonna to snap to. And believe it or not, if I come back and hit play, our footage is gonna to come to a two second slowdown. Very quick, very easy. Now you're gonna notice that it got a little bit choppy in there as it did the transition here to 
being a freeze frame. And I don't want to have it do that. I want it to be a smooth move. So let's make that adjustment. Up here in the motion effect editor, all I'm going to do is switch from the type of being both fields to blended VTR. Now you're not going to notice a noticeable difference right away. But when I come back and hit play, you're going to notice that it's a lot smoother move. There we go. Very nice. Let's have that come down to, oh, I don't know, about here. I think that's enough time to sort of get all of our footage to come back or to get all of our titles established and then have us transition back to have this clip be full speed. So again, right back to the motion effect editor, add a keyframe. We're going to come back to our clip. We're going to go plus 48 because we want the essentially the time for it to go back to being full speed to be exactly the same. Let's just adjust this back to be 100. There we go. Now you remember I said that the shot is not going to be the same length anymore, which is fine. All we have to do now is just simply extend the shot down just like that. And what we now have is we have our time warp. Very quick, very simple. Here's the slowdown, boom. This is where we're going to add in our colorize effect. We're also going to add in that blur there as well. And there we go. There's a transition back to full frame or full speed. Okay. So let's go in and let's add our colorize effect. Now, before I do that, I'm going to add two new layers of video. Now, the reason that I need to do that is because I can't get in and alter anything with the time warp effect because once I start adding edits and things like that, it's going to mess with the timing that I've already created. So basically, the sort of the additional effects that I'm going to add on top of the time warp are just going to happen on different layers. So let me show you how we're going to do this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on this first keyframe that I added in here, and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on my timeline. Command and M on the Mac, Control and M on Windows. And what we're going to do is at this point, I'm simply going to add an edit on both V2 and V3. And we're going to do the exact same thing at our next keyframe here, or actually our last keyframe. So if I come down to the last keyframe, just like such, again, all we're going to do on V2 and V3 is we're going to add an edit. Okay, I'm going to zoom back to show the entire timeline. So basically, the only thing I need to remember is that we're going to have to have our transition to bring in our colorize effect be two seconds at the top and tail, and the same thing with the blur effect. So let's grab that colorize effect. Now, you remember I told you that this effect is included in your Media Composer subscription. So let's come down to BCC. We're going to come down to Color and Tone, and we're going to come to Colorize. Now, obviously, if you're using BCC Lite, the setup's going to look a little bit different because I do have the full version of BCC installed. Now all I'm going to do is simply take the colorize effect, I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto V2. And believe it or not, this already almost looks like how I would have it if we just wanted to stick with this sort of purpley look. Now all I'm going to do is simply step into effects mode by hitting shift and Y on the keyboard. Now if you don't have effects mode mapped on your keyboard, no problem. You can simply come up and find it right here at the top of your timeline. Okay. Now you're going to notice the effect itself right over here. We really don't have a ton of parameters. They're really just color pickers for the five different colors that we can add. But you can see right now, I really only have two colors on. I have the standard color, which would be color one, which is black. And I have color three right here, which is purple. So if I wanted to get in and adjust this color, all I need to do is just simply come in. We can really make this color whatever we want. Now for me, I think I'm going to go with a little bit more of a blue look, maybe kind of like that. Okay, very nice. Now, a couple ways that we can get in and we can add our dissolve in. The easiest way, fairly self-explanatory, is to simply say dissolve. Let's just come over to the edge of our effect. I'm simply going to hit dissolve. We're going to have it start at the start of the effect or the start of the edit. We're just going to punch in 48. Okay, so we can do that as well. Only thing obviously to keep in mind is that by doing that, we're adding real-time effects on top of each other. So once we add another layer, this might not play back in real time for you. So let's have it play back in real time, because we can actually adjust that right in the effect itself. All I'm going to do in the effect, simply head on up to the general controls, right-click to add a keyframe. Remember our old plus 48 frames. There we go. We're going to add another keyframe right here. Let's come back to that first keyframe and set its opacity to be zero. Now again, all we're going to do is the exact same thing right down here at the end. Again, add a keyframe. In this case, we're going to go back 48 frames. We're going to add another keyframe. All I'm doing is simply right clicking on the parameter that I want to add the keyframe to and saying add keyframe. Okay, Jump down to the end here. Again, our opacity is now going to be all the way down here at nothing. And now we've gone and we've added that colorized look to our shot. Okay, 
Now, last but certainly not least, before we get into the title, we need to add that blur effect. Now, the blur effect is a standard effect that comes with Media Composer. No third-party plugins required. Again, Command and 8 to call up the effects palette. Now, you remember I have the effects palette up here as well. Now, I'm always accustomed just to calling up the effects palette on its own as a standalone window. Uh, but obviously, go with whichever preference you prefer, standalone window or right up here in the project window. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the image category and you can find the blur effect right here. Again, exactly the same thing as we did before. Drag and drop onto the topmost layer. Now the thing is, is that once you apply that effect, you're actually not going to notice it do anything, which is fine because we just haven't told the effect what exactly we want it to blur. We actually need to set a region for it to blur. and Let's do that right now. I'm just going to choose my rectangular tool and just draw a rectangle around the entire frame. Once I let go, you're going to notice that nothing's happened because we're simply not monitoring the top layer of video. Now, let's put it this way. A value of 20 is way too much for our blur. Let's put it down at something like 5. I think that's probably going to be pretty good. 5 is not too bad. Maybe even a little bit less. Maybe 3. I think that's much better right there. Now again, exactly the same thing as we did before, but you're going to notice we already have keyframes here, which is fine. So all we're going to do is simply go plus 48. Okay, we're going to add a keyframe. Come back here, we're going to go minus 48. Let's make sure we punch in minus 48 properly here, minus 48, there we go. Again, add a keyframe, and all we're going to do is at the first keyframe, we're going to set the blur values to be zero. Exactly the same thing on the last keyframe. You'll see now that if I come back, let's see if I can play this back in real time here. Take a look at that, real time, very nice. Of course now this is where our text is going to come in that I'm going to show you in just a second. And then it's going to fade out and keep going. Ah, we dropped a couple frames there at the end but that's still not too bad considering blurs are normally the hardest thing to process and I've actually got three real time effects all playing back together here and I'd say that effect fared pretty well. Okay. Last but certainly not least, we need our text. Now in this lesson, I'm not going to be going too much into the title tool, except for the fact that we're going to assume for argument's sake that you've already created your list that you can see right here. It's the exact same list I had at the beginning. And let's come in and let's just add that again, exactly the same duration on top of that blur, okay? Now what we need to do is just divide up this effect into five sections. Now. We know that the endpoint for the tips and creating text backgrounds or tips for creating text backgrounds is going to start exactly where we are right now and it's going to go for 48 frames. Okay. What I'm going to do at that point is I'm simply going to add an edit. Now I have a shortcut map for add edit which is F6 on my keyboard. If you don't have it mapped, no problem. You can simply find it right here at the top of your timeline. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in some other edits here. I'm not going to be too precise with them. We're just going to go pretty close. So basically this is going to be number one, number two, number three. So what's going to happen is title, number one fades in, number two fades in, number three fades in, and we'll have number four fade in just about there. Okay. But what we need to do now is to get in and actually crop each of these and then we're going to add a little fade in to have them all appear. Now again, what's important to keep in mind is this first one's going to take about 48 frames to fade in, which is fine. So let's get in and let's make this adjustment here. So all I'm going to do is step into effects mode. Again, you can find effects mode right here at the top of your timeline. And let's just adjust the bottom crop here. Okay, we're going to crop this right up so that all we see is just the tips for creating text backgrounds. Now, for the first one, this is where we're going to have tips for creating text backgrounds and our time warp effect because remember, we're going to fade in to have them appear as though they're fading in one at a time. So again, we're going to adjust the bottom here. Same thing with number three here. Now, let's just make sure we did this right here. So we got, it's actually number one we want to make sure that we got here. Number one, there we go. This one's going to be number two. There we go. Number three, and of course, number four. Now, I added one more edit in there, too many. Let's just make sure that we did this correctly here. Whoops. Okay, so let's go. So we got our first one. There's number one. There's number two. There's number three. There's number four. That's fine. We don't need this last part, but we are going to want to have it fade out. And that's going to take 48 frames. Now in this case, I think I'll just go with the dissolve method. So what we're going to do is just simply hit the dissolve key on the keyboard. We're just going to have this dissolve be 48 frames. Simply say add. So of course this is going to 
appear as the background is blurring and as our colorize effect is happening. Now what I should probably do is I don't want to have it be 48 frames because I'm going to want to have this dissolve happen on the middle of the cut. So why don't we actually just undo that? Maybe I'll make it about, oh, I don't know. Let's make it 38 frames. Why not here? Okay. So this way I can put a 10 frame dissolve in between each one of these here. And of course at the end here, we're going to have this dissolve out for 48 frames. We'll want to have that ending. Okay. So basically as you'll see at the end, this whole thing will fade out again exactly the same as the bike starts to speed up again. Now, chances are I'm going to have to render this just the top layer. And that's one thing that throws actually editors a little bit. We'll just talk about that in just one second. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit the dissolve key or the transition key on the keyboard. And this transition is going to be 10 frames centered at the cut. And we want to apply it to all the transitions from the in point that I marked to the out point, just like such. So now if I come back, you'll see that we fade up, dissolve the first one on, dissolve the second one on, dissolve the third one on, dissolve the fourth one on, and fade it out. Let me just come back here. I'm just going to render this quickly here. Let's come into clip, render in out, just say go. Now I mentioned that I was only going to render the top layer and that might throw some editors off because a lot of editors think that, you know, when I'm working, you know, in the example that I have here, I need to render each one of these layers to get them to play back. You know, let's say they weren't playing back in real time, but that's not the case. I could create, you know, a 12 layered, you know, stacked up effect with a whole bunch of different, different, you know, BCC and gen arts and all these different plugins on there. And when I go to render, the only layer that I need to render is the topmost layer, assuming it stretches the entire length of all of the clips that I want it basically to trickle down to below and render. As long as I render just that top layer, everything below it will play back in real time, assuming I'm monitoring the layer that I rendered. So you'll see in this case, I know that this layer here, the time warp is going to play back in real time. Once I get to the first title, this has all been rendered. So it's almost like that this whole thing has been almost like it's been mixed down. But you'll see if I hit play, what's going to happen now is it's going to play back exactly the way that we want it to. And there we go. Tips for creating text backgrounds, a time warp effect, BCC colorized, the blur effect, and some cool titles. And as you'll remember in the intro, I said that most editors would take this type of an effect to a program like Adobe's After Effects. But as you saw in this tutorial, with a little bit of forward thinking and some great tools at your disposal, you can easily create this effect inside of your Media Composer timeline in no time flat. Now, before I wrap up this lesson, I want to thank our sponsor, Video Guys, and don't forget to check them out and use coupon code MC101 for 5% off your Avid purchase or any other purchase, including G Technology Storage, software plugins, and so much more. And if you like this tutorial, please click that subscribe button. And don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them in the comment section below this lesson, or you can send them to Kevin P. McAuliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.